Hi, in this tutorial we want to take a look at n particles in Maya 2016. Particularly, we want to try to uh, take a look at uh, creating a snow effect using that uh, n particle system. So we want to go into the effects menu. We go into the n effects and you'll see uh, n particles menu item but what we want to do is to create a, an emitter okay and we're just going to uh, click the option box I'm going to go reset everything I'm going to call this my emitter and if you've never used particles before what an emitter does it's like a water hose that sprays out uh, tiny little dots and and you can program it to how it disperses those but it's each little points so to speak and uh, those points represent your particle system and all of your particles are contained in one group and the emitter is just what disperses those particles so you look here at the emitter type there's omni which would be omnidirectional it, it, it a single point would spit out particles in all directions and this is the rate how many particles per second uh, you say uh, um, you have max and min distance uh, we won't get into that yet the speed at which it spits it out that's your speed and uh, a ran the speed random if the speed is one if I put a random value 0 0.5 then that's saying uh, the speed may be one plus 0.5 or 1 minus 0.5 so it make it a range of 0.5 to 1.5 uh, if I did a 1 here that would be a range of 0 to a range of 2 so this is just if you wanted to randomize that value but uh, all this can be edited later so I'm going to hit create and as you see we get a, some things down here I'm going to push that out of the way and open up our attribute editor. So you notice we have my emitter, we have an n particle shape, and we have a nucleus one. The nucleus is the solver. It is the brains of the operation, so to speak. It would calculate collisions. It would calculate gravity and various forces. Uh, it's and you, you can kind of scroll through there and see a few of the things that it uh, does but one of the important things in our situation is the gravity that's the force of gravity that's uh, 9.8 that's you know that's natural gravity on earth we'll keep that there for now and uh, you see the gravity direction that's x y and z so it's going in negative y 9.8 the particle shape are once so the emitter just broadcast the points and the, the particle shape are the actual points that come out so let's go ahead and play this uh, you hit play and uh, be sure to give yourself plenty of room here I don't know how many, many frames you might have here I would put yourself at least I don't know six or eight hundred let's give ourselves eight hundred so we just have uh, plenty of room to see what's going on and one other thing before we take a look in your preferences here we want to go to your playback speed this needs to be play every frame alright so let's get started and see what happens so we push play and it looks like nothing is happening so I'm going to zoom in here okay something is happening all right, I'm going to click off. So you have that point. That point is the emitter, and it's broadcasting uh, points. And those points, if you select them, <coughs> excuse me, that is the end particle shape. So how would you begin adjusting that? So that looks novel, but that does not look like snow. So in, in this tutorial, the idea would be to, to make this begin to look something like snow. So first of all, let's take a look at my, the emitter. Instead of an omnidirectional, it's, uh, let's do 
a directional that's where the particles just go in a single direction now I want them to go up I know snow comes down but gravity is going to influence that so I want it to go up and then the gravity will grab it and pull it back down so I want to go uh, in my emitter I did directional and we can take this particles per second for now we can, we'll take that down to 20 so now you kind of see what's happening you say well, why is it going in that direction well we'll come down here and we see that uh, that's the X direction okay see that X so this is being broadcast in the X direction and then just gravity is taking it and pushing it down and if you notice the speed that's the speed at which it comes out of the emitter if I take that higher if that particle comes out with more force then this little stream is going to be broadcast uh, further from the emitter uh, so you see that uh, so that that's the speed at which it leaves the emitter okay but I want this to go uh, positive Y I'll go and I'll make the zero and X and this should go straight up and then it comes straight down now I want this to spread so there is a spread attribute here that we can play with we'll take that to one and see if that does the trick let's see what we can do next I'll take this particle back up to about 50 a second uh, one thing we're going to do, need to do is slow that particle down the speed of the particle is determined one by the speed at which it leaves the emitter uh, that's true but um, once it leaves the emitter it's kind of up to the solver which will be affected by uh, these particles will be affected by gravity or fields or that sort of thing and each particle will respond to those fields depending on its mass and a few other attributes so let's take a look at those in the particle shape okay so we'll go all the way up to the top in the particle shape the count that just says uh, how many you can see there's uh, 745 it's not a bad idea to give your particles a lifespan because if not and you have a 3000 frame simulation the particles never die and that's just more the computer has to keep up with so what we might do is say hey we want to give you a, a constant we can say we want you to live one second and die so you see what happens there they kind of live one second and stop that's not enough for us so we let's, let's give ourselves maybe 10 seconds and you can kind of see eventually it'll stop another thing you can do here is random range and I can say 10 and this is kind of a plus or minus like I explained before so it could be as low as 10 minus 3 is 7 or 10 plus 3 is 13 and it just gives a little bit of randomization in there so some may begin disappearing here and others a little bit further alright particle size I think what we have now is is okay we'll may come and change that later uh, for our purposes we don't need to uh, really play with collisions now dynamic properties if I don't want gravity to have any effect I can turn off gravity I can turn off the nucleus gravity and just to show you and notice now that whatever that initial speed is it just kind of carries that off but we we do want gravity on but that's how you could turn that off uh, there's something called dynamic weight and what I want to do is snow is very light so I want uh, to take this weight down significantly and now it should begin to make this begin to fall a little slower Let's take this down even more. I'm not as slow as I'd like, but another thing is the drag and the conserve. Like 
a little conserve goes a long way but we can take this down and that will begin to kind of slow these particles down and that's starting to look a little bit more like a, a nice snow um, now not so much at the emitter because you have that that uh, coming out with speed but if that's above your scene you know if you're looking down here that's that's not looking it's still a bit fast for me so I would like to go I don't know if that's too small let's see what a 2 does uh, now you're starting to really see it slow down so we'll go somewhere in between that mm -hmm.